Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. Today, the show comes to you from the Lincolnshire Showground. The public has already arrived. They have a choice. They can sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to offer them a sum of cash on the table today. You're not smiling yet? Not yet. <laughs> the alternative is place the same goods into an auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. The public are in. They're eager to do business. They want to walk away with, of course, the real deal. It's already busy in the dealer's den. And first off, let's go straight over to Karen Delmaney and find out if she will be rattled by our first item. And what have you bought today? This silver item. OK. Family piece? Yes, my husband's. Your husband's? Yeah. OK. So it's old. Hubby knows you're here with um, oh, yes. Yes, he a very I'm... treasured item today. Yeah. You've got permission? Yes. All right, let's have a look. Um, see straight away it's silver there's no problem with that there's some sort of mark on here but hard to decipher i mean it might be 95 or very rubbed hallmarks but we do know it's silver so we've got like a, a dual purpose here we've got the rattle and we've got the whistle yeah it's nice it's handsome it's in good condition hasn't had a lot of bashing which they often do all the components are there Go on, I dare you. No. Give it a go. It works, does it? OK, well, I won't put lippy all, all over no. it and spoil the whole look. So it's got everything going for it. It's just a question of how much um, money I'm going to put on the table. 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. Mm, deep in thought, I like that. <laughs> it's not an immediate no. no. Take a run and jump, um, Karen. A bit more? I, I rate it sort of around the £100 mark. Um, I will go a bit more. It's, it's a good item. It's a good commercial lot. So, Susan, there's £90 on the table and you're about to get some advice, I fancy. £90? I mean, did she do well? OK, the independent value is because it's 1950s. I think they've been a bit on the mean side. They've said 30 or 40. Mm. I think it's certainly worth more than that. But there's no question about it. Karen has put down a fantastic price, a fair good offer. Rattle it and put that money in your purse. Okay. Oh, okay then. Thank yes. you, David. Don't say that very often. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> right. Yeah. So have we got a deal? Yeah. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. So nice little night out with hubby then. Maybe. <laughs> Now, let's glide over to James Late's table to find out more about this battered footwear. So, you've got your skates on and come down here. Absolutely. <laughs> what can you tell me about these? Uh, they belong to my late father, yep. who I believe used to go down to a local area near us um, and try his hand at speed skating. And where's, where was that? Um, it's an area of floodland at the end of the River Neen near Whittlesey. Whittlesey? Yeah. OK. And was your dad a champion skater? Unfortunately not, no, he wasn't. just he used to like to have, a, have a practice. Yeah, OK. When was he skating there? I guess it would have been around the 40s, somewhere 40s, around there. 40s, yeah. Because yeah. I was going to say, to me, these look as if they're made in the 30s or 40s. Right. Um, so what's the difference between speed skating and any other sort of skating? I have no idea. You have, no, no you're, I've you're never a... been on skates in my life. No, so. I went on once and fell over and that was that. <laughs> never tried it again. <laughs> and is there a maker's name on them? Um, I believe there is on one of the, uh, oh, one yes, of the blades. Yeah. I can see. Cahoon and Cadman, Sheffield. And they're called Go Ahead. Means nothing to me, I'm afraid. Go Ahead Skates. Go Ahead and get that's your a, skates on. That's, that's a good name for them. So how would these have... I mean, how would you have worn them? Would they have screwed onto I believe a boot? they would have screwed onto a boot. So you've um, had a special... With obviously a thick heel with the... With the side so of the you'd, screw. you'd screw that into the into the heel. I believe so, and then the three points and the, would, and those would, would lock, lock in. into your sole. Yeah. Not terribly satisfactory, no. I shouldn't think. I mean, if you went over a bump, couldn't that easily quite possibly shoot up, Absolutely. and then you'd be flat on your back or your face? I'm not surprised if you don't skate. <laughs> We've got more sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I have no idea how how to value them. I'll have a go. See what you think. See what we can do. Yeah. Uh, Twenty. 30 pounds. 
Um, I think you're still on thin ice, actually. Am I skating on thin ice? OK. Let's go for some thicker ice, then. Uh, 40 pounds. And I think that's probably as much as I want to give for them. It's your final offer. I think it probably is, yes. Um, I'll accept your offer. You will. OK, very good. Well, I hope you um, find Thank something you good for your, for your £40. Thank thing. you very much. Next, let's see if Cheryl Brown will pay a big sum for a dainty little vase. You've brought in a very nice hand-painted vase today. Yes, I have, yes. Can you tell me anything about it? Um, other than it being in my nan's best room parlour. All right, OK. Um, I just remember seeing it in there with her other ornaments in a display cabinet, what she used to have. All right, so she kept it so, in a display uh, cabinet? Yes, she did, yeah. So you've had it quite was. a while, then? I have, yeah, yeah, about... 20 years, I suppose, now. So. OK. And did they tell you anything about it? At no, all? I don't know anything about it at all. OK, no. shall we have a little look at it, then? I mean, it's um, definitely sort of, I would think, turn of the century. Um, it's what you call cameo glass. You've got, like, a relief moulding and, and you've got, like, a red tinge underneath and then it's hand-painted on top. So you get this wonderful sort of colour. You've got, like, a Victorian... It looks like a dog rose on the front. If you turn it around, you haven't got any decoration on the back. So it's it's obviously you know just for just meant poses. Just to be one way. That's yeah. right. Yes, you've got a little bit of decoration around the top. Unfortunately, when I've had the closer inspection, if you have a look just here, something's been dropped. So you've got like an impact mark here. So okay. that that actually detracts quite a lot from right. from the piece itself. Um, I was hoping it might be French, but I think it's English. Okay. I was looking for a signature. So. That might mean it's a mass-produced piece. I just can't tell, unfortunately. Um, Price-wise, I really don't know how to gauge this. Um, to put 20, 30 down. I was hoping for a little bit more than that. Um... If it hadn't had the impact mark on the top, I think I would have been prepared to have gone to 40. I don't want to offer 30, but I just don't see yeah. it anymore for me. OK. <laughs> um, I think I would like to take it to auction, then. I think that would be a good idea, because you've got a wider field, yeah, okay. you've got a beautiful piece there, and yeah. somebody will really appreciate that, and you might get £100 for it, and mm. I'd be very pleased if you did. OK. <laughs> Is that right, Tracy? Yes, that's fine. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. It's off to auction for the cameo vase. Let's hope for a good result as it goes under the gavel of auctioneer Colin Young. Now, on the dealer's day, Tracy brought along a Victorian green, white and pink cameo vase in the manner of Thomas Webb, decorated with flowers. We're here at the sale. It's coming up now. I've asked the production team, where is she? No one can find her and the lot's Who's coming up. 150 to go then, surely 50. 40 then, if you like. 40. 40 pound bid, 40 bid 5, now make it a 45. 45, bid 50, 50 pound bid 5, 55, bid 60, 60 bid and 5. At 60 pound in the third row. At 60, it's 60 at 60 pound the reserve. 70, 70 pound bid, 70 bid, 75 now. 75, 75, bid 80, 80 bid, 85 now, 85, 85, bid 90, 90 bid, 95 now. 95, 100, 100 bid, 110, 110, 120, 120, 120 130. There's hands all over the place. The internet is getting stuck into this. They like it. 170, 175, 175, 180, 180, 185, 185, 190 now. 190, 195. That's a no. 190 is on the net. You're out in the room now, everyone else. We sell at 190 pounds. The gambler's gone down at 190 pounds. Take away the commission. I make that 161 pounds. Now, I've just looked out of the corner of my eye, and who should I see but Miss Tracy? Where have you been? We've been waiting for you, Tracy. You know, the show has to go on. We've been looking for you. I know. You've been in the cafe, haven't you? I have. Okay. Apparently, she... the auctioneer's ahead of himself. OK. <laughs> She's in the cafe having a nice cup of tea. I have to tell you, the vase you turned down £30 for from Cheryl Brown has just marked £190 under the gavel. Oh, wow. £190. <laughs> quid. Well, you were sat in the cafe, you know. I'm having a good time here at Dickinson's Real Deal. Take away the commission, £161 you're going home with. 
Happy? Oh, yeah, very much. Okay. Thank you. Get back to the cafe now. That was the real deal. Thank you. <laughs> Coming up. So, are you ready for this? I am. Suspense is killing you, isn't it? Not really. No? OK. 20. Find out if the tension mounts at Karen's table. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The dealer's den is busy with locals who are out to get the best deals for their antiques and valuables. And it's straight over to Michael Hogburn's table and a very decorative necklace. Linda, a little bit of jewellery, is it a family piece? It is, yes. Oh, OK. How long have you had this one? Um, well, I've had it for five years, yeah. since my mother died. But it was willed to my mother by yeah. her aunt, which oh, okay. was my great aunt. Yeah. yeah. Do you know much about it? Well, only that it is Edwardian and Peridot and Seed Pearls. Exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah. Nine carat. Might have been a brooch in its former life, because uh, this chain looks a little bit later to me. It is. Um, it was a necklace, but my great aunt had it converted so she could wear it as a brooch. Yeah. But then when my mother received it after her death, yeah. um, she decided, well, it would look nicer to put a, a chain back on it. So oh, okay. it's, it's like dual purpose yeah. brooch or necklace. So we've got the little seed pearls in here. Yes. And we've got the peridots in here. Nice. And the nine-carat gold chain. Mm -hmm. Why are you selling it now? Any reason? Well, I don't really go to functions where no. it would warrant wearing something so decorative, really. Yeah. So it is an old-fashioned piece, that's isn't right. it? It's yeah. just stayed in the drawer, so... Down to the money, honey. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make you an offer, shall we? Yes, please. I'll go 20. 40, 60 pounds. No? No. More? No, thank you. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. 70 pounds. More, please. 80 pounds. Still more, please. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't see it much more than 80 quid, to be honest with you. The value weight-wise is around 60 pounds. But it's a more decorative piece as a jewellery rather than being yeah, I think so too, melted really. down. Yeah. But what about 90? More? I would like more, yes. I would do. 100? More? Yes, please. 110? More? Yes, please. No more. <laughs> then I would have to go to auction then. You sure? 120 then. I was hoping I would get 150 at least. Really? Yeah. I don't think I'd want to pay 150, so maybe you want to take it to auction? I think I will have to. Yeah. I wish you luck. Thanks Thank for you. coming on. So, Linda would like more, please. Let's find out if the bidders will oblige as the necklace goes under the gavel. Thank you. I remember this on the day. It was a rather pretty jewel. I think he offered you £120. He did, yes. You didn't think that was enough? And you said, no, I'm going to gamble. <laughs> it's here now. It's coming up under the gavel. Is it going to make its reserve of 150 and more? We're about to find out. £100, anybody? £100. Hundred. Hundred pounds with you at 100 and 10 now to a seer. 100 pounds bid, 10 now to a seer. 110, 120, 130, 140 now, 40 bid, 150, 150 bid, that's 150. 150 on the reserve. 150 on the reserve. 150, 150, 160 and on now. Last call then going, it's on the market and selling at 150 pounds. 150 pounds right on the nose that we have some commission to take off. I reckon that's about 127 pounds. Now, what's your first reaction? A bit disappointed? A little bit, yes. I think sometimes you take a chance when you gamble. We often tell you that. Sometimes it works out in your favour and you do exceptionally well. Sometimes just modestly well, uh, as we have today. So a bit more than you were offered on the day. 150 under the gavel. £127 is the real deal. Not that satisfied, but that's the way it goes when you gamble. That's the real deal. Back in the dealer's den, it seems to be a day of ceramics for dealer Cheryl. Let's see if she'll be tempted by the next item. Well, I see you bought a lovely charger and yes. bars in today. That's right. Um, is that out of your own collection, or how did no, you come by no, it? No, I inherited it from my in-laws. All right, OK. About 10, 12 years ago. 
It's actually made by a company called Crown Ducal. All oh, right. And it's an English pottery. Yes. And there was an artist called Charlotte Reed, and yes. she made an awful lot of uh, pottery. And what made it special mm -hmm. is that it was called tube lining. So you have all these raised dots. Yes. And as you can see, you've got section there and it's section there. With the charge, if I just like to turn it over, I'd just like you to see the mark. If you have a look here, you've got Crown Ducal made in England. So yes. we're looking, these are sort of 40s, 50s pieces, because right. you can tell that by that. Mm -hmm. And the, you've got the pattern number here, which is 4298. Yes. And then Charlotte Reed's done her signature there, which yes. is good. But what's quite nice, individually they're hand painted yes. and this is green and this is like um it's, it's called luster wear right which is quite nice and she was very renowned for that as well right. and then you have this sort of what i call um ripple defect yes which goes on in the center but what is nice you've got the two pieces yes. as examples the charger would have gone on a wall yes um and the vase would have sat near it with some flowers in i've had to look at both pieces and this one is damaged yes um, it's obviously had um, water in it and the water seeped into the pottery so you, you can see where the water seeped through. Yes. It's such a I shame. Had a plant pot in it. I yeah. know. What, what we could have done was put like a lining in and then it would yeah. have prevented that. This is my forte. I love this sort of stuff. I'd like to put some money down and see what you think. So I'm going to offer 20, 40, 60. 80, 100. No, I've got a figure in my mind and it's more than that. Right. That's very definite. Now, are we close or are we... Uh, pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close, right, OK. Pretty close. All right, well, if I make it... 120. OK, I'll accept that then. Please. You will. Yeah. Julia, thank you very much. Thank you very Save much. Thank you going to auction. <laughs> <laughs>
I would still like a wee bit more. A wee bit more. That's sounding more encouraging. <laughs> Find out after the break if James Lake's idea of a wee bit more will seal the deal. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Lincoln in Lincolnshire. It's been a busy day in Lincoln so far, and now it's time to head to Michael's table and a collection of pocket watches. Stephen, a job lot here for me. And then we've got the silver chain here with the little medallion on it. Yep. Where they come from? Uh, my mum used to collect these when she was a bit younger, but she's got no use for them anymore. They right. just sit in a drawer. Yeah, and none of them work, do they? Um, well, if they do, they need I work. I don't know if they ever have done. No. Like, she just bought them from antiques fairs, yeah. auctions and the like. But just going yeah. through them, we've got a silver one here. Yep. A uh, silver one there. I think one of them's gum metal, I'm not sure that's that one. And then this one, 10 karat gold. Yep. So continental. Yeah, the gold one's actually an American one. Yeah. Uh, a little Waltham one? Yes. Yeah. And another silver one there. But they've got to be working. I oh, appreciate that. Yeah, so there's a lot of work there, really, isn't it? It's just how much do I want to pay for Well, it, it depends. I mean, obviously, they've been sat in a drawer a long time, so they haven't yeah. been working then, but that doesn't mean to say they don't actually work. So I'll make you an offer, if that's all right. Sure. You got a price in mind? I've got a price in mind. Good yes. boy, that's what I like to hear. So have I. I'll go 50 quid. Yeah, not quite the price I had in mind. OK, what about 60? No. What about 70? No, I think you're a bit short yet. I don't think I am. No, I don't think that's quite enough. 80 quid, final offer. OK, I think that's fair enough, actually. Yeah. So, no, we'll that's, that's okay. That. We'll do a deal. On Good that. boy. Okay. I love a deal. Thanks All very right. much. Thank you. Now let's head back to Cheryl's table and an impressive looking piece of Chinese porcelain. Well, you've brought in a very interesting blue and white vase today. Yes. Um, can you tell me how you came by it and why you brought it in? I purchased it from an auction about 18 months ago. All right, yes and I was going to have it somewhere in the house, but it's not fitted in really, so I've decided oh, to... bring it in today. Bring it in today. So. OK, so uh, was you told it was 18th or 19th century? I was told it was um, 18th okay. century. All right, OK. Well, it has got that feel, and if you actually have a look, if we start at the front here, you've got, like, a, somebody of importance with their two handmaidens yeah. and walking beside her, and I really like... She's got a fan of peacock feathers, yeah. so you can tell she's a lady of wealth. And then if we um, turn the um, vase around, it's got very, very nice decoration on it. The other thing I like about it is you've got a samurai on. So it would have been made for somebody with a little bit of money. Unfortunately, um, where I had a look at the vase before, when we turn it over, we'll have a look at the marks on the bottom. Yeah. They actually depict um, like 18th century. But when you actually feel the vase, yeah. and, and I've had a look inside, it actually feels later. So okay. it, it's sort of, I would think, 1900, 1910. If we have a look on the vase, Angela, unfortunately, we've got a hairline crack just coming down here. Yeah. Bit of the kiss of death. But let's just um, get some money out, shall we? And uh, see what we can do. OK. OK? Yeah. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Like a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> a oh, bit more. you sound like Oliver Twist. I know. Um, yes. Right. Without the crack, I see it about 200 to 20. But with the crack, I'm a little bit um, hesitant, shall I say? Well, I've come in now because I think it's, it, it's interesting. I've just looked at the paperwork regarding this vase. The independent values and the auctioneer are saying two to two fifty, which would seem about right for a vase which is anywhere between 1880 to about 1920s or even maybe 1930s, they are confident that even with that crack, because of the size, because of the decoration, yeah. they can go with the 2 to 250. So I'm going to say to you, you've heard what our dealer says, she is not confident. My advice is, run to the auction, let's see if these auctioneers are right. Do they know their business? We're about to find out. 
I think I'd like a lot, bit more, so I'll go to auction. You'd like to take it to auction? Yes, I will. I think you'll find they've got a wide audience, and because it's such a nice piece in blue and white, I think they yeah. do well. Okay, so, thank you very you much. Well. Thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. The Duke sounds confident that the vase will do better at auction. Let's find out as it goes under the gavel. On the dealer's day, Angela, you brought along a very glamorous-looking Chinese vase. I did, yes. Yeah. How long ago did you buy this as auction? Um, 18 months ago. OK. Now, what did you pay for this 18 months ago? £22. Well, you did well. <laughs> you did very well, cos £22, even... It's had a crack in it. It's still a glamorous-looking vase. Now, is it going to make the £200 reserve or should you have taken the £100, a quick profit? £100 bid at 110 now. Do you have for me now? £100 bid, 10, 110, 120, anywhere else now. 110 is on a bit of 110, 120, anywhere else now. 120 with you, 120, bit of 120, 130, do us in now. 30, 140 now, 140. It's 50, creeping 150, up. 150, 160. 170, 180, 190. It's close to the reserve. At £200 bid, at 220 now to a say at £200 bid. 20 anywhere else now, £200 bid, it's the last call then selling at £200. Angela, you're a shrewd character girl, <laughs> you are. 200 quid, deduction of commission takes you back to 170 but you pay 22 quid. I certainly did. That means a profit of £148. Very good. When you go into your next auction, <laughs> because I want to come along. On the day, the real deal was here in the sale room, 200 pounds, take home 170 quid. That was a real deal. Time to clock what's on James's table as we head back to the dealer's den. So you brought along an old timer? Yes. What's the history of this? Um, it was given to me by a friend about 20 years ago. Yeah. He was downsizing and gave it to me as a present, basically. Yeah, OK. And, and you don't particularly like it anymore? Yeah, I, I still find it fascinating, yeah. but my wife and myself, we're downsizing okay. now, and it's one of those so things that's been put in the cupboard. Yeah. And do you know if it keeps good time? It does keep reasonably good time. Reasonably good reasonably time? Now, what's good, reasonably maybe good time? within a minute or so. What, a week or a day? A week. A week? Yeah. Oh, that's not mm -hmm. bad, is it? Yeah. And I see it's a, it's a striker. Yes. But the chimes do not, don't work, uh -huh. unfortunately. So it really needs a, an overhaul, doesn't it? It needs a little bit yeah. of attention okay. in that respect. Let's have a look at the dial. The dial is white enamel. And that will... Oh, it says examined by Woodruff of Stockton. So it's probably sold by this firm, because yeah. it's not an English clock. You realise yeah. that? It's a, it's a French clock. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. No, I, didn't I mean, know. nearly all these carriage clocks are, uh, uh, have French movements. Sometimes, you, if you open the back, you see a maker's name. So we'll have a look. No, no name at all that I can see. You've obviously had a good look, haven't you? Yeah, I... Yeah. I must admit, I, I don't know very much about clocks anymore. No. But, um... So, anyway, it dates from, I suppose, the turn of the century. Sort of 1900, oh, right, yeah. 1910, that sort of thing. Yeah. OK, well, let's put a bit of money on the table and see, see how you feel. Um, let's put down 20... 40, 60, 80. You're not smiling yet. Not yet. <laughs> 100. 120 quid. Mm, I think possibly it's worth a little bit more than that. A little bit. I hope it's worth well, a bit more than that, otherwise I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say, yeah, more than that. Got to make a tiny profit. Of course, yeah. All right. 140. Still like a wee bit more. A wee bit more. That's sounding more encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I've got a, I've got a figure in my mind that I want to pay for it, and yeah. we have reached that figure now with one of them, right. 150. No, I think I'll take my chance. You're going to take a chance to auction. Have you, have you sold at auction before? I haven't. No. Oh, well, so it'll be an so interesting be day an out for you. Yeah, yeah. and you, Dave will get to shake hands with you. <laughs> Thank you very anyway, much. Anyway, I hope you do Dave. really well. Thank you very much. Thanks for bringing it. seller is eager to gamble for a little bit more money. Time to see if this will pay off at auction. Now, on the dealer's day, Dennis, you brought along 
a late 19th century, early 20th century French brass carriage clock with an enamel dial. You turned down £150, Dennis. Are you having any second thoughts about that? No. No, I still feel it was maybe worth a little okay. bit more than that. I think it's going to be close. It comes from good stock. Who's going to start me? 100 for it. 100. <coughs> 50 to go then, surely. 50. 50 pounds bid up. 55. Bid 60. 5. Bid 70. 5. Bid 80. 80. Five. 90. 90. 95. 100. 100 pounds bid. At 100. And 10, surely. 110. 120. It's creeping. 130. 140. 150 now. At 140, it's all middle 145 is the last call. Then at 140, we sell then at 140. A hundred and forty pounds. I thought it was going to be close, but not that close. Yeah. Take away the commission, that leaves a hundred and nineteen pounds. Are you satisfied? It's fair enough. We tried. You tried? Yeah. That's the I'm way happy. it is. When you gamble, it can come up for you well. Sometimes it doesn't. On the day, the real deal was with our dealer, James Late. A hundred and fifty pounds. James, tick tock, mate. You were on the money. Coming up, a glowing review from the Duke and auctioneer Colin Young. Colin, how long since you've seen a pair of coach lamps as substantial and as stunning as those? A very long time. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal, where in the busy dealer's den in Lincoln, Michael Hoffman's eyes have lit up at the sight of this pair. Watching on a David and auctioneer Colin Young. Linda, what a fantastic pair of coaching lamps. Where did you get them? We bought them along with the carriage from a local um, gentleman who used to have a carriage driving business. We used the carriage and the lamps for my daughter's wedding, and then we sold the carriage and kept the lamps. They're lovely, aren't they? They are beautiful. You not thought of keeping them? They don't fit the carriages that we've got. They look ridiculously out of Have place. Have still got carriages? We've still got carriages. Yeah. But they are far too big for the carriages that we own. I first thought they might have been off a hearst or something like that because they're so big. No, they are off a land down. They yeah. were built, they say, around 1885. Yeah, well, we had a quick look, didn't we? And we know they're Italian. Yes. Uh, and we've got this silver bit here. But if, if we turn it over, you get to really see how well they are made with all this beveled glass here on the top, which would enhance the light inside, would it? Oh, yes, yeah. it intensifies the flame from the candle, yeah. making the carriage more visible. Brilliant. And then we've got this little door here with the handle on it, which yes. opens. And inside, I mean, the condition's pristine. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it yes. really is nice. It really is. I think they're fantastic. I like them. I'll put this back the other way. I haven't had a good look over them, but I'm sure you have. Is there any damage I should know about? There is some damage here on the oh, corner. Oh, yeah, OK. And some... Yeah, um, a little bit on the corner some there. Some dents there. Yeah. I think just use damage. Yeah, well, 1880, 1890, <laughs> wherever They've the They've had year, a lot really. of use, haven't they? A lot of wear. Yeah. Colin, how long since you've seen a pair of coach lamps as substantial and as stunning as those? A very long time. When I saw them in the queue earlier, it was a double take over the shoulder and you just knew they were fantastic. Yeah. Beautifully made. Uh, today, they could be used for interior decoration. Lots of people would want those. What a wonderful pair of lamps. Yeah. Where are you placing your bets? Four to seven hundred. OK. I think that's a realistic estimation. On the day in the auction, I would expect them to be getting up towards the top end. We'll have to see, first of all, if Michael likes them enough to buy them. Let's see what he puts on the table. So I'll make you an offer if that's all right. Please. 50, 100, 50, 200, 250, 300 pounds. No, I want more than that. More? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll try another 20 quid. I think they're worth more than that. 340. No. It's about what I want to pay. A bit stuck on this one, David. I don't think it's enough money, Linda. I think what we've got here is a superb example of a pair of coach lamps. Um, they're Victorian. A really showy pair of lamps. 
Now, the independent valuation here is four to seven. Yes. My advice is, sorry, Michael, not enough money. Get to the auction. You might get a nice surprise on the day. Linda, can I improve my offer? You can try, yes. <coughs> £440. No, it's still not enough. Off to auction, then? Yes. I wish you luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Despite Michael being keen on a striking pair of coach lumps and offering £440, seller Linda has decided to take them to the auction, where they're about to go under the gavel. You brought along a pair of 19th century black iron and brass carriage lamps. Did you have any idea what you felt they were worth? We would like to get a return of around 500 on them. Okay. Right, well, you sat down with Michael Hogburn. Michael, the Cockney character, said, I'll give you 440 quid for them. You know, I'm trying to do what Michael <laughs> says, of course. <laughs> it's a big lump. That's what he normally says. It's a big lump. Well, anyway, he offered 440 quid. You said no. I think you did the right thing, because I think they're worth more than that. They're here in the sale room with a £500 reserve. How confident do you feel? Reasonably. Reasonably. I feel very Hope confident. Hope the right people are here. I'll tell you why here. I feel confident. They're just a lovely quality item. Let's see what happens. It's coming up now. Five hundred pounds, anyone? Five. Four to go, then, surely. Four hundred. Four hundred pounds bid at four hundred. Twenty now to a seat at four hundred. Four twenty. Four forty. Four sixty. Four eighty. Five hundred. Five fifty. A lot of interest in the room. Five hundred pounds bid. Five fifty. Six hundred. Six fifty. Seven hundred. Seven hundred, sir. 700, 700, 750, at 750, 800, 800, 850, 850, 900. Stops at 850. 850 Just in time, 900. And 50, 950, 1,000, 1,000 pounds bid. At 950 then, all that are finished then, going at 950. Thank you very much. Gavel went down at 950 pounds. First of all, that's the total hammer price. Are you pleased? Yes. Yes. OK. <clears throat> Take away the commission, and I make that just a little bit over £800, about £807. Reaction? Good? Very pleased, yes, Very thank pleased. you. Excellent. On the day, they shone out in the sale room. £950 has brought a smile to Linda's <laughs> face. Take away the, the commission, and she's going home with £807. What a pair of lamps. Linda had been hoping for £500, but made just over £800, a fantastic result. Now, let's see how all our dealers fared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's cheeky. This is great. Karen still has the silver baby rattle, but sold the walking stick to a trade buyer for £90. Cheryl has a buyer interested in the vase and charger and hopes she's about to do the deal. I'm not surprised we don't skate. We've well, got more sense. <laughs> James hasn't parted with the skates yet. Perhaps he's rethinking having a go. And a collector of pocket watches took these off Michael's hands for £140. We've just had a great result here in the sale room. Linda's carriage lamps just made £950. They really lit up the room. What a cracking price. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.